So I'm just going to recap energetics here because we're in a animal cell, usually a human cell. We're going to be at 37 degrees Celsius plus 273 degrees to make it Kelvin. So we'll always have 310 here. Um, the other thing is, is that we're always going to be multiplying it by the gas constant, which is 0 0.002 kilocalories per mole. The Kelvins will knock each other out. And so this becomes a really simple process where we just take 0 0.62, 0 0.62, and multiply it by whatever our natural log is for our in-out concentrations. So let's practice. This says that the glucose concentration inside the cell is 0 0.05, 0 0.5. Um, outside is 5. The millimolars knock themselves out. So I end up with 0 0.1. I take a natural log, and as it's showing down here, I just punch that into Excel or my calculator, and I get a no number of negative 2.3. So I multiply negative 2.3 by 0.62, and I end up with this number. Good. Negative 1. 0.426. As we talked about in class, this is a negative delta G. It's going to want to happen. It makes sense. There's more glucose outside the cell than inside the cell. It's going to go through the membrane pretty quickly. For this case scenario, once again, that 0.62 kilocalories per mole where we took the gas constant and multiplied it by um, human temperature in degrees Kelvin, and we end up with inside the cell being 0.5, outside the cell being 0.005, and now we have a problem because inside the cell is way less concentrated. Inside the cell is way more concentrated than outside the cell, but we don't want the glucose to leave the cell. We want it to come into the cell. So we should be expecting a positive number because we're going to have to have some kind of active transport happen here. So 0.5 inside the cell, 0 0.005 outside the cell. We end up with 100. The natural log of 100 is 4.6, and we multiply it by a 0.62, 0 0.62, 0 0.62 by that natural log. We end up a positive number, and it makes sense because there is way um, less glucose outside the cell than inside, and so we would expect the glucose to leave the cell, but we don't want it to. Um, we want the glucose to go against its concentration gradient, so we get a positive delta G. We need 2.8 kilocalories um, per mole of energy to move that glucose against this concentration gradient. Great. In this case scenario, there is no charge to anything, so we don't need to use this at all. But in the next case, um, there is a charge. Okay. We're going to move sodium. It has a plus 1 charge. Um, inside the cell is 10 millimolar, outside 140, so 10 divided by 140 ends up being 0 0.07, and the natural log of that is negative 2.64. So very quickly, I multiply the negative 2.64 by 0.62, and I end up with negative 1.6368. Great. But this is a charged ion, so it has a positive charge of 1. Um, and I always watch to see what that ion is. I can have a positive charge of 2, I can have a negative charge of 1. I multiply it by Faraday's constant, which is 23.06, and I multiply it by the energetics of the membrane. Most mammalian human cells have a charge of negative 70 millivolts, but so that we can knock out the volts in Faraday's constant, we convert that to negative 0.07 volts. We multiply all this and we end up with a negative number, negative 1.652. Um, the only thing that can mess us up here mathematically is if this is a negative number and we multiply by a negative number, we'll end up with a positive number, so watch for that. Um, also, just a reminder of our mathematics, we're following PEMDAS rules, so we're going to multiply and then divide. Um, that's why you don't go from left all the way across to right. You multiply these numbers first, then you multiply these numbers second, and then you add them together, and you end up with a negative number. I need to find myself um, 2.8 kilocalories per mole of energy to move a glucose, and la-di-da! I just gave myself 3.2 kilocalories per mole of energy when I moved the sodium through the membrane. So I only really need one sodium ion to get 
um, one glucose molecule in when the concentrations are these. So it's very important that we keep in mind that that only works when the concentrations are 0.5 millimolars inside the cell, 0.005 outside the cell. So hopefully that helps you and doesn't make you more confused. We are done and we will move on.